Hey guys, so we've had a lot of people commenting on other social medias asking, you know, like how to get into plastic hobby, plastic modeling type stuff. Um, there seems to be a lot of confusion with the answer that I generally give. So we're going to just make a video about how to get into it and the basic stages of how to do the thing. So uh, this video is going to be a mix of me showing off some different brands that I started with when I started plastic hobby. And then we're going to go over some basic jargon and uh, the video is going to end with me putting a model kit together. Um, but the basic thing is uh, if you just want to get into painting miniatures, you're really not interested in putting model kits together. Um, Reaper Miniatures, they make a series of pre-made models. Uh, if you get these white ones, the bones ones, they, my understanding is they are recycled PVC plastic. Uh, they have a line called Bones Black, which is 50% recycled and 50% new plastic, and they're a bit tougher. Um, they also have metal figures. Uh, metal figures can be a little bit tricky to paint because as you touch them, they're more likely to rub off. Um, and there's some tricks you can do to stop that from happening. And we'll cover those in, in the video when we paint this one. And then sometimes with model kits, uh, unfortunately, you'll end up with models that are missing parts. As you may be able to see there, there's a hole where her other arm should be right in front of the cape. Um, a lot of the time, uh, I like to kit bash models when I have a lot of extra pieces. But in the case of this one, uh, we'll be making a new arm for her in a different video. I am going to make a video where we kit bash a model from scratch. And I'm going to talk about modifying models. And this will be one of the ones that we modify in that video. And then there's WizKids. Uh, WizKids makes these really cool, super detailed models. And... Uh, they come with a pre-rendered image of what they believe the final product should look like. Um, I am going to model this particular one probably off of a Hellbrook Warhammer mixed with uh, some kind of demon from World of Warcraft with that dark green lichy vibe type thing going on. Uh, this one's definitely going to get modified. Uh, but I do love the sculpt on that and that would be a lot of fun to paint even for a new painter. Games Workshop. Now they can be a bit expensive, but they make kits like this where it comes with little how to paint guides. It comes with paint and it comes with a paintbrush and it comes with a basic assembly guide. Uh, this kit I believe comes with one miniature. Uh, some of their kits come with three. This one comes with one. Uh, we're gonna be doing a video on this kit alone where I go through and I show you just how nice of a model you can make using just what you get in this box. Uh, if you just want to find out if you like plastic modeling, but you're not really sure how far you want to go with it yet, Games Workshop also makes these magazines, uh, both for their fantasy game and for their 40k game. And it's just got a fistful of lore and just a lot of really good material, a lot of reference material. A lot of great full color of all of their models so you can get a good idea of paint schemes and comes with a basic how to paint guide. Um, it's just a really great kit and then all of them come with at least one model. Uh, my understanding is that there are just two of them. One of these uh, which promotes their first strike game uh, for, for Warhammer 40k and then one that uh, pitches uh, Age of Sigmar, which I believe also pitches their version of First Strike for Age of Sigmar, uh, which I can't remember off the top of my This is the model kit that we're going to be putting together later in the video. This is more of a traditional model kit, and there won't be a lot of talking going along with this. There'll be some talking at the beginning, but for the most part, this video will just be a high speed of me building this, and that's absolutely fine. Um, we're not going super crazy in depth as this will get painted up with the rest of my Night Haunt army, so we will cover paint schemes for this model when we paint those. Uh, a lot of people like Gundam, a lot of people like mech stuff, but the only trick with this is the different grades that Gundam has, and the fact that you're dealing with more traditional modeling. If you're new to plastic modeling, you may want to pick up a couple of cheap kits so you can learn how basic modeling works 
before moving on to something like this. In my personal opinion, there is no sense in spending 30 or $40 only to then end up with a kit that you butcher because you weren't sure what you were doing. Uh, a lot of times you can get really cheap kits on Wish and they'll just build simple little tanks and things like that and then maybe your eight or nine pieces. Um, one of the most simplest kits I've got was this one and there was only like 12 pieces to this. Um, again, just keep an eye out, look around. And if you have a local hobby store, go seek out the advice of a local hobby store. They can guide you just as much, if not better than what I will be able to. Uh, but with that having been said, let's move on with the video and get to putting together a model. So a bare minimum, you're gonna need some kind of a plastic glue. My personal favorite is to me extra thin cement. To me, I makes a regular one as well. Citadel makes a regular glue as well. Uh, this is a bit soupier than the normal cement. And you can see here with the extra thin cement, it is basically water. Um, the extra thin cement will soak down into cracks and crevices as you glue, which is what I like about it. A bare minimum that you're gonna need is some kind of an X-Acto blade. I like something that has any kind of a hex or a flat section so that when it is set down on a table, it will not roll. A lot of times uh, with perfectly round blades, the really cheap ones, they'll roll off the table. And the last thing you want is a blade in your lap or your foot. Now I use uh, a set of flat flush cutters. As you can see, there's a perfectly flat or relatively perfectly flat cutting surface here. And that allows me to get right up close to what I'm working on and just snip the part off. Uh, these are not required if you're getting into the hobby. I would wait and get these on like your third or fourth model. Uh, as you can see, mine are pretty worn out and actually need to be replaced. Uh, if these were brand new, you would not be able to see any kind of light or gap there. Um, so I need to replace these because they're pretty worn out. But honestly, that's all you really need to put together most basic modeling kits. Now, a lot of the time in the hobby, the disposable plastic part is referred to as a sprue. And you'll see here that there are numbers pertaining to different parts. And those numbers will be referenced usually in most instruction booklets. Very rarely will you end up with a model kit where the numbers are not referenced. Um, but that's how you know where to put what pieces. Uh, for a beginner, something that I wish more channels went into depth about, as you can see here, you have this big thick support and then this little triangular support that connects it to the piece. So therefore, when you go to cut this out, you wanna get as close to the piece as you can with a knife. And basically you wanna to try to cut through that. In my case, when I do stuff like this, this is what these snippers are great for. You can get right up next to it clip it off flat, and then do a little bit of cleanup after the fact. So just using this sprue real quick as an up close example, when removing the sprue, you can either go all the way right up against the model, or you can leave just a little bit left. By leaving that little extra bit, you give yourself a bit of wiggle room, and you're gonna not stress out the plastic for the model kit. As you can see here, we're left with just a little bit of a nub and you can come in with either some kind of a, a shaving tool like this X-Acto knife or you can get yourself a pair of like uh, files for plastic modeling. Uh, I use uh, diamond tip files which are used for jewel crafting uh, but you're just gonna you know come in and just work away at it and take off very small layers uh, you may feel the need to spin it around and very lightly come at it from the other angle. And there we go. It's as simple as that. And then like I've said before, to remove a mold line, just lightly scrape away at the surface of the model until that mold line feels flat. Sometimes you'll still be able to see the mold line, but when you touch it, you'll realize that it's perfectly flat and you can stop shaving. There's no sense in continuing to go and cutting deeper into the model. So the only other thing that I will say is that if you do Gundam kits, they're called runners, they're not called sprues. And I've heard people refer to the sprue as a tree. 
Okay. There won't be much talking in the rest of this video, as again, like I said, I want to do a high-speed build of this. Uh, but if I come to something that I feel is important to cover, we'll bring the video back down to speed and we'll talk about it. But basically, like I said, uh, there are numbers on the instructions that correlate to numbers on the sprue. So, for example, here with number one and number one, and I just want to cut this out. And see, we've had a break here. So that break's gonna need to be repaired uh, when we're all said and done. If I repair it now, it's just gonna keep breaking. But we'll need to keep track of that. Sometimes this happens, you can see that it's a very clean break here. There's very little here that's, that's come off with it. And basically what that means is that was either an air bubble or a defect in the mold. Um, that happens every so now and again. So something you see me doing here is something that I would never recommend any new beginner modeler do. You'll see at certain points in this video where I'm basically cutting into my hand. I have extreme control over my hands from years of doing this. Uh, it, with these small parts, you need to support them from behind. So as a new modeler, I would highly suggest using like a popsicle stick or something in between your finger and the model so that way the blade will hit the popsicle stick and not hit your finger uh, again this is just a bad habit that i have that i really need to stop so sometimes with these gw kits um, they make the indication that things should be glued together uh, before the next step but when you realize going forward as you can see, this piece of this rose vine is supposed to go inside the dress here, but around the dress here. And uh, I think what's going to be best is to go ahead and glue this piece on at the same time that the rose bush is glued into place. There can be some indications like what we're dealing with right now where it's telling us to glue something together separately from the next step when in reality we should be doing both at the same time. And that's what this extra thin cement that we talked about earlier comes into play is I can hold all three of these pieces together uh, with my hands and then apply the glue to the crevices and it will soak into everything. Uh, so that's a really big use for that extra thin cement. So if you're only gonna buy one glue, buy the extra thin cement because it's got more utility to it. But so as we can see here, there's a mark here and a mark here that line up with that mark and that mark for where that rose bush is supposed to uh, go through the dress so you can see the hole here where it's supposed to come out into the bottom here and the hole here where it comes out and wraps around so we can just lay this in here see we were fortunate to have our break here because there's a little bit of a support and what I can do is I can put a little piece of plastic in from the back side which you'll see when we go to fix that later and this seems gonna look really messy but that's fine when we paint it you'll never know
We're getting to a, a delicate point here where multiple pieces that have glue drying on them are setting all at once. I'm gonna go ahead and secure this off camera. And when we come back, we'll continue forward, but I need to stop and let things dry. Okay, so I have something special planned for the base, so I won't be mounting her to the base right now. But judging by these wraiths, I get the feeling that they are going to mount very close to the dress, which will make it very hard to paint. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna focus on the repair work that needs to be done to her dress. And then we will put the rays together separately and I will find a way to mount them to a piece of wire to be painted separately. But this is her basically done. Now, uh, a really good way to fix this is you could put a piece of plastic in behind here to act as a support for the piece of quote unquote fabric that has snapped off here. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to use probably either a piece of paper or a piece of tea bag, just a little strip to act like a reinforcement behind it, as well as a small piece of plastic. We're just going to take a nice thin strip. We're going to cut this down a little bit more. And once it's done drying, we may need to cut off a little extra with an X-Acto knife, and that's fine. Or sand it down with a little bit of sandpaper, but again, that's fine. What is it? basically just some plastic that has been melted down in model glue. And we'll apply a little bit to where we're going to attach it, a little bit onto the back side. Attach the piece of paper in place. As this dries, we're just going to keep applying a thin layer of the model glue across this backing we've added just going to flatten it out and that will add some real strength to that as that dries. This is evergreen styrene. It is these little tiny plastic strips that are in here. And this is small enough it can be cut with a pair of scissors. We're just going to cut two small strips and that will act as our backing. And the trick to this is, is that the fact that plastic glue will melt styrene, this will bend and take its shape as we apply more plastic glue. You guys don't need to see me do this a second time. You already saw me do it the first time with the first one. 
So we're just gonna cut back when the three models are done and uh, we'll talk a bit more about repairs and fixing gaps and holes and that'll be the end of the video. Okay, so we're just gonna briefly talk about how I mount models to a base. So I've taken a little bit of cork a very thin piece of cork you can use whatever size cork you want you can use whatever basing material you want but i am going to roughly mark out i marked wrong so i marked it off with a wavy line but right about here is roughly the middle now why is this important well with a model like this that doesn't stand up on her own we know that based on how she is and the characters that are going to go on either side of her um, she will be a little bit back heavy, uh, and she stands up on her own without the extra two characters. However, I want to mount her slightly farther forward. So whereas it, since she stands up on her own, if I wasn't going to add the other two figures, I would want to roughly put her in the middle of the X. But because I know that those other two figures are going to make her a little bit back heavy, we want to mount her just forward of the center. And we can just use super glue for that. Since we're, we're gluing to cork, we're gonna use super glue for that. If you were gluing directly to the base, uh, you could just use. Hey guys, I'm not really sure what had happened here at the end of the video. It seems that the audio got completely out of sync. But as you can see, this is kind of how I go about building models. This is how I go about choosing how to base them and where to place them on larger scale bases. If you want me to do some more in-depth videos, I'm more than happy to go further into any of these subjects, whether you want more about basing, more about building, more about construction, more about fixing models, whatever it is that you guys want, please feel free to leave those comments in the section below. I do like to go back and watch older videos and see the comments. And you know, if it's been a while since I've uploaded this video, feel free to just leave a comment because a lot of times you guys think of things that I don't that, you know, make really great videos. So thank you guys so much for all the love and support that you've shown this channel as well as my other social medias. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.